This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through your 2020 uh, Flagstaff E Pro model E19 TH. It's a toy hauler. Um, so I'm starting here on the door side of the trailer and I'm moving towards the rear right now. You can see you have regular crank type or scissor type crank stabilizers. It takes a three-quarter inch crank or a three-quarter inch socket on the end of a drill. It's what most people use these days. Of course this is a vent for your garage. You have a power awning with an LED strip. Um, a quick connect for your LP down here. You can see it right about there. That uh, allows you to uh, hook up your grill or griddle or whatever um, low pressure propane appliance you have and the uh, griddle will hang right here on this rail and there's a utility table that hangs next to it okay all right so uh, you have outside speakers of course your steps fold right into the trailer um, keep in mind that if you're on uneven terrain you can adjust the length of the of the legs by pulling out this pin pulling it all the way out there's one another one on the other side too, so you can do that. Um, this is a, a hookup for a solar panel to charge your battery. So if you happen to get a solar battery charger, uh, you could always plug it in right there and it just charges your battery. Of course you have a solar panel on the roof also that comes with the trailer. This trailer converts power plus it inverts power, so it does both. Um, one notable thing about this to uh, to know is that it has the Moride air suspension system here. So you can see the blue apparatus down there. If you notice, let me get closer here, excuse me. If you notice there's like a a, an, a pointer here and then there's a, a, graph, a graphic like a scale there. Uh, you want the, the trailer itself or the needle itself to be in this green area no matter um, what load. So basically you have a, a Bluetooth remote type of, um, um, uh, 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 controller for it and um, you also can use the app. They have an app that you can get off the uh, Apple or, or the Google Play Store or whatever depending on what device you, what kind of device you have but um, you can operate it that way but you can also use the controller they give you. Now the thing is the controller has two presets so if you're going to carry the same you know let's say you got two dirt bikes or something you can set preset number two so this is in the zone so to speak when you have two uh, dirt bikes in it and then you can put preset number one when you're pulling it without any um, cargo or or, uh, or or bikes or whatever in there okay I'll show you this right now let me reach inside and grab it So you can see this is the remote right here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm trying to get, there we go. So there's the remote right there. Of course, right now the sun comes out and I can't see the monitor here. Let me move inside so I can shoot it this way. So you just hit any button to light it up and it'll automatically connect. So right there, we're at 3.5, right? Um, so this has an air pump that's on board. Um, so it will, if you add, obviously you add, if you wanted to go up with it, let's say to 3.8. Let me see, I don't know if we can even see this, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get in the shade again so I can see my monitor here. Alright, so. So I just went to, to, to 39. You can, might be able to hear it. Here, let me put it over here so you can hear it. The pump is actually up here. So right now it's raising it. Um, if you look at the needle, it's changing position very slowly. So, when I, I guess what I'm the the bottom line is you're gonna you're gonna have two presets: one for when you're pulling it empty or under normal load, you know, just your just your stuff, but no dirt bikes, for example, and then another one if you have the dirt bike. So, you don't have to use the presets; you can manually adjust it once you get it loaded. To, so that that pointer is in that green zone. Uh, so, okay. Um, 
Also, there are plenty of online videos. And keep in mind, in your packet here, uh, there's two, two different uh, um, uh, operator's manuals that come with it, so you can, you can always sort through that too. So, okay. Hopefully I explained that clearly enough to you. It's still running as you can hear. Now you can, you can squat this down when you're using the back ramp. You can squat it down and then you can manually come up here and raise the front end using your power tongue jack here. And you can get the perfect angle so you can drive right in. Uh, so it's kind of neat. So also, also down here you have a spare tire of course. I don't know if I mentioned that underneath there, okay? So you can see we're, we're way over now. It's, it's going up, it's going to the top end of the green uh, zone. So keep that in mind. I think, I hopefully I explained well enough so you understand the concept anyway. This is the outside of your water heater here. Um, this works on either gas or electricity. Um, right here, let me get this out of the way. Right here, I just want to show you that there's a switch. In the lower left hand corner, right now it's off, but you can rock it on and off. This switch controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here. Okay? There's also switches inside, but, I, but you gotta remember that this switch is here. Just so you can, because it kills the power to your, to your um, electric heating element. Now you can light it, you can start it inside, you can light it on gas from inside, that sort of thing. Always make sure there's water in the tank before you turn it on, that's important. Um, this is where you drain it from, right here. It takes an inch and a sixteenth, uh, six point socket right here. This is a pressure release valve here. So, obviously you never release the pressure or remove the plug. Um, if you got hot water in it, you always want to let it cool down first so you don't scald yourself or worse. So, make sure you do that. You have two um, deep cycle marine batteries. They're wired together at 12 volts. So it's putting out 12 volts, you just have double the storage capacity. Um, your solar, solar panel will feed that battery, right? And when you're inverting power, uh, your inverter will convert the battery power from 12 volts over to 120 AC, 110, 120 AC. Okay, I'll explain more when we get inside about that. Uh, this is obviously part of your hitch. We'll explain that to you when you get here. You got two LP tanks that are um, full. This is your power tongue jack here. Um, it's got a light on it also. Also, if this ever fails, you can take this part of the rack off and pull this plug here, this rubber plug, and you can crank it manually using your jack handle, or your crank handle, I should say. Okay? All right. And in the storage, this is where the rest of your um, hitch is at. You can see the table I told you about is right there that hangs next to the grill. That is your crank along the back there. And the blue coil thing is your uh, sprayer. Okay. All right. So the sprayer itself connects right here. So you just quick connect it right into that, and you can spray your, your, your dirt bikes down, regular bicycles, whatever you want. You can spray down with that, okay? Um, your power cord hooks up here. It's 30 feet and 30 amp cord. All right. The most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water connection right here. So you just hook the hose at the campground right onto there, turn it on, and it pressurizes the whole trailer. You're ready to go. Now, if you happen to go to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill your onboard water tank by filling it right here and then using the pump in the trailer to pump it. So even if you don't have city water, you can still operate everything like you do just by pre-filling your tank before you get to the campground. All right. This has to do with winterizing, something you'll have to research a bit if you're going to do it yourself. Otherwise, you, you can bring it in to have it done. Um, but this is where you would draw the antifreeze in. Okay. This last thing here is a black tank flush. So, what it does, let's go down here to the valves. Okay. All right, so you have, um, let me see what we got here. 
I don't know if this has been dumped yet or not, so we'll find out. It's, it's been water tested with water, so. All right, so this is the black, the black valve for the black tank. The black tank holds toilet water and waste. This is the gray uh, valve for the gray tanks, which is sink and shower water. So you put your hose on here, it goes into the dump station. Then you pull the black one first. The black is the dirtiest of the water because it's toilet water and waste. So you pull that. Then, after you do that, you'll come over here and you'll pull the gray. You pull the gray second because it's cleaner, dirty water than the black water. That's the only reason. Okay. Then if you leave this valve open, right here, you can come up here and you can put your hose right onto here. The hose at your dump station. Turn it on and it'll spray the inside of your black tank and clean off the centers and clean it out really well. So that's a really good feature. Okay. Now, this tube here, this is where you, your, your dump hose, the hose you hook up to here and run to their dump station is stored in there, right? That gate valve right there is for your fresh water tank. If you don't use all the fresh water, you can just pull the pull the uh, the valve and dump it. Okay, and of course this is the other side of your your um, Moride uh, air system, and it's got the same type of a uh, pointer and the same graphic there with the green center in the or the green section in the center, just like the other side. Okay, all right, so this is just the service panels of your free refrigerator. You don't really have to go in here, it's just for service, but this, this drain hose should always be hanging out like that, so the condensation from the refrigerator drains to the outside. Another vent for your garage. All righty. And this, of course, is your door. Self-explanatory, you just... You're just gonna pull it like so, twist it, and then pull it down. It's very simple. We'll go through that when you get here to pick it up. Uh, this housing is telling us it's pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you get a backup camera for it, it takes a Furion camera that fits in that housing. We sell them here. Um, you can buy them elsewhere, but just make sure you get the right one that's gonna fit in there, okay? Also, while we're looking up, one thing you have to remember is very important. You have to inspect the roof, the seals on the roof of your trailer. So you do that about every, oh, every, every 90 days or so, three times a season, whatever. Once in the spring, once in the middle of summer, once in the fall. You go up there and you look at all the sealant on the roof and all the rubber membrane. Make sure there's no separation or cracking anywhere. Uh, some year when you go up there, there's going to be, because all trailers do have to be maintained. And uh, that's when you know to do maintenance on it. So that's why you're inspecting it, just so you know when you get to the point where you have to touch it up. So it's very important to do that, okay? I can't stress that enough. Okay. So I mentioned inverters and converters, right? So this device down here is, the, is a converter, okay? Converters take 110 AC and convert it to 12 volt DC. Okay, so let me get down here. So this is it right here. So open it up, you just push on it. So what you, you have, you've got regular household type circuit breakers here. They're 110 AC and they're labeled, right? You can see those at home. Then the power's converted over to 12 volt DC. On this side, you got 12 volt fuses here and they're all labeled, okay? Push it down there. So um, it's converting power. That means it's taking 110 AC converting it to 12 volt DC. Uh, 12 volt DC is the same thing that comes out of your battery. Um, everything that can run on 12 volts in this trailer does. Some things have to be AC power like the air conditioner or the microwave, these receptacles for example. All the other things, all the lights and pumps and motors are all DC. Okay, so this also does one more thing. It um, When you're plugged into shore power because the battery you know, obviously it's 12 volt DC. This will charge your battery as long as as long as you're plugged in. It's going to sense how much energy your battery needs up front, or batteries in this case, and it's going to send. Uh, you know, if it's totally charged, just about it'll just, tr just trickle a couple amps. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps, whatever it needs to keep it charged. So um, it's a good thing. Also, if any of these fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up and glow, and you can actually see them through this perforation, so you would know that you blew a fuse. Okay, so that's the converter. Over here, this button is connected to the inverter. 
inverter does the opposite. It starts with 12 volt DC and it and it inverts it up to 110 AC. So you just turn it on like that, that's all. So right now it's taking 12 volts from your battery and it's converting it to uh, from DC to AC power. Um, only one plug is going to be wired into this. It's probably this one here. Um, I'll find out for sure for you. It almost always is this one, although it's possible it's this one over here, but I'll find out for you for sure. But that's the power inverter, okay? You may know all this. I'm just, I have to assume you don't, so I try to explain it as best I can. Um, for some people, direct current and alternating current it really confuses them, the difference between the two, so I try my best to explain it anyway. Now, this is your solar control panel right here. Okay, so it's saying you have a flooded battery, which is how I set it. It's a, it's a sealed, semi-sealed battery. It does have, you know, it does have um, uh, liquid in it, and um, it, uh, it, but it does have caps on it that can be pried off. So instead of calling it a sealed battery, we call it a flooded. You could make the case that it could be called a sealed, but that's what we go with. So okay, so right now there's not an A and B battery, even though there's two batteries together. They're wired as one. So B is all you pay attention to. So um, right now we're plugged in, and let me bring it back around. We're plugged in, and you can see that it's right now because we're the battery's totally charged. Um, it's saying that it's it's charging your battery from the you see the picture of the sun there, the picture of the panel. 0, 0.0 amps are going to it. Now if we we can get it, all right, let me try turning on some more DC items if not we'll unplug it and it'll uh it'll start it'll start uh charging the batteries because the batteries are like i said are totally charged right now so i'm going to go out there and shut the power off for a second then we'll come back in and read it read what the uh, solar panels are doing so you can see i'm going to take the ac power off the side so now we're running strictly on battery power and the battery is being charged by the solar panel okay so right now you can see it's changed from 00, 0 to 2.5 3.0 3.7 4.3 4.8 4.9 4.10 so we're right about five amps are being charged to the, into the battery right now. See the picture of the sun and the arrow is pointing towards the solar, solar panel. I tell you the sun is sending this many amps to the battery. Okay, you push B again, and you can see the battery is 100% charged. Batteries, uh, 45 amp hours. You have you you have a total of 13.3 volts outputting, which is which is what it. A uh, 12 volt battery should be at 13.3 to 13.7, uh, so you're right in there. So that's totally charged. Back to what the solar panel's doing, 4.9 amps. Okay. Uh, you, there's also, I believe, for this one, a Bluetooth. Uh, I think you can get an app for your phone. I'm almost positive. You can look into that a bit. And there's, a, you can also charge. Uh, there's a USB right there. You could charge your. You could charge this way with the USB port. Okay using the solar panel okay hopefully I explained that clear enough to you it's gonna if you don't know this it's gonna take a little bit of a learning curve but there's tons of literature in your packet here plus you can always refer go to the websites like this go power site they've got tons of videos and tons of um, educational uh, PDFs you can download that explains the whole thing to you how it works so you can learn as much as you want to some people just learn how to operate it it and just leave it at that some people go farther it's just up to you okay alrighty so I'm gonna this is a microwave and it's a uh, well, let me just show you it's a convection microwave so it actually has air cycling through it so it's a convection microwave um, works like any other convection microwave um, your your water obviously is just hot and cold I mean there's no nothing to that the two ways, like I explained on the outside, you can get water from uh, your onboard holding tank using your, the 12-volt pump that's located in the trailer. It's right here, actually. 
Um, if you wanted to turn on the 12 volt right or, or the water pump right there, then you can pump water. There's some water in the tank, so I guess I could show you. So that's that's not city water. That's coming from your tank. Okay. If you have city water, there's no reason to use the tank or the pump. To light your water heater on gas, you do this. To turn it on on electric. It's like this. Now remember, there's another electric switch in the lower left-hand corner of the of the um, of the water heater. So you got to turn them both on. Never run it without water in it. Uh, if there's no water in the tank, that's called dry firing, and you'll have to get it repaired. And um, that's not a warranty issue. So keep that in mind. Your this right here is for your your awning. You can see you can send it out a bit. You can see it. Goes in and out. It goes out eight feet. Um, you'll see the awning tube when it's all the way out, so you'll know that you're all the way out with it. Never leave it out unattended. You're always going to, um, if you're not at the campground, just roll it in because the wind can come up quick and damage it, and then you have to, you know, get an insurance uh, repair done on it. So you don't want to do that. Um, also, you check your levels here. Your battery. We already know it's charged because the panel told us that, but this. This is telling us it's charged also. Your fresh water tank is two-thirds full, but we're still testing it. It'll be empty when you get it. Black tank is empty. Gray tank is empty. You can see it graduates up in one-third increments as it fills. So with the black and gray tank, once you get past two-thirds, you're going to have to start thinking about dumping it. Okay? Alrighty. Um, you've got a four-speed fan in here. Always use the fan with the shower. You have a, got a, you've got a vent cover over this, so you can actually open it during the rain if you want. Um, but it's all pretty basic stuff. Four speeds, low speed, barely you barely hear it. You put it on four, and it'll just about pull your hair straight up. So you got, you got that plus two two uh, speeds in between. Um, always, well, this one just switches off. But keep in mind that all these these LEDs also have a button in the middle too. All right. So, here we go. More, more ecology stuff. This device here is called a uh, water miser. Now this is one, a perfect example of something that you, would, you want to refer back to, uh, to manufacturers videos, even though you have plenty of literature on it. But what this is is a water recirculator. So, the idea is this. When, you're, when you turn on your hot water for the shower, normally it would just, you would just be running water down the drain until it got hot. And uh, so if you're in an area with, with drought problems, for example, or you're using onboard water and you don't want to guzzle it all up, um, that's kind of a waste to just have it running down the drain. Also, when it goes down this drain, it goes to your gray tank, so you'd be filling your gray tank unnecessarily. So what this circulator does is that basically the hot water, it, it sends it around in a loop. It just keeps going round and around, so nothing goes down the drain and nothing more is used out of the tank or, or the tap for that matter if you're in like a drought drought area even the city water is a problem so but it'll do that and then this this will change a more vivid blue here and you'll know when that happens that it's hot and once that happens you will turn it to normal operation and, it, and you just use it like a regular shower but you don't waste any water heating it up or and you don't waste any space in your storage uh, tank your gray tank by just running unnecessarily running water into it that's not um, been heated up yet so I hopefully you understand that the uh, there's like I said literature on this plus you can look at online videos um, you see right there Aquaview Shower Meister you go to their website and uh, it's a good way to learn okay so the only other thing about the bathroom is is the toilet now the toilet the bottom line is with RV toilets, first of all, let me show you where the flush pedal is. That's the flush pedal. So you cannot use them dry. Below here is a hot water tank, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me back up here. I've been talking a long time here. It's the, the black tank is directly below. So we've talked about your black tank. Now I pulled the valve on your black tank so you know it's empty. So the, this is the bottom line. You can't use the toilet with, without a little bit of water in it to start off with and chemical if you're starting off with an empty black tank. So you pull into the campground, you hook your water up and your power, then you come in here and you take your toilet chemical, whichever brand you use, you read the directions, you put one dose right in the toilet bowl. Then you'll step on this pedal 
and because there's um, let me turn on the pump here so we can do it that way because uh, um, there's water in the tank we can do that so you just go like this and there it goes it's flushing right and what, what you'll do is you'll stand on this long enough to put about a gallon or so of water in the tank there's no way to tell exactly what that is you just have to use common sense you need some water in it with chemical otherwise it'll believe me it'll stink so bad you won't you'll never do it twice if you don't do that so um, you put about a gallon of water in it it doesn't have to be exact so that's the the, the, the bottom line is you never use the toilet dry it's always got to have a little bit of water to start off with and toilet chemical okay also when you flush it it defaults to that level so if you step on the pedal here you can just push down a little ways and you can see it starts to fill the bowl without without opening the trap so you can put as much water in the bowl as you want before you use it um, so you have to do that each time obviously. okay all right so that's that let's see what else we have here your range top you just spark the light it you just use a, a, a lighter and you're just gonna turn it on and use the lighter on it okay now you have a griddle for this one it's sitting in here but it'll hang outside on that rail I told you this is the rack right there that hangs on that is the griddle itself and um, that's that's how you cook outside we'll talk more about that when you get here so you can understand it you have a table here this this nylon mesh this screening has magnets on it it'll clip onto the back door so you can have the the door down plus have the screen up so you don't get bugs inside which is a cool thing I, I put one th this in the bench position this one here so it's like a couch this one is in the stove position so it's out of the way obviously to get uh, two dirt bikes in here you would have them both up in the stove position like this you can also bring them down and uh, and turn them into two beds right so at night you would fold them down and uh, you got enough room for a couple people to sleep or more if, they, if you have you know kids or whatever um, so that's that you also have tie-offs for the cargo you got four of them one there one here so you can tie it to your your toys and um, and uh, they won't they won't slide around and get damaged or damage something else all right now the refrigerator first of all this is the, this is the furnace you just click it on turns on click it off you go like this click it to the left now as soon as I did that you can probably hear it running the gas went off it shut off immediately but it will still cycle through to purge itself so it's gonna run for a minute or two but it is off all right now your refrigerator is um, a gas absorption refrigerator and it runs on either 110 AC or LP gas right so to turn it on and off is just that then you select your source which is auto auto means electric the reason they call it auto is because it it automatically seeks out electricity and if it can't find it it'll automatically switch over to LP gas or if you're if during the day when you're out adventuring it's a hot day and the power at the campground goes out it'll it'll sense that and automatically switch it over and light it on gas so you don't spoil your food so auto is where you want to be with that you can also dedicate it to gas by doing it like that but even if you don't, if you can't find electricity, it's going to switch to gas. Okay. Um, this here, this is something you'll have to play with. It's, it's, a, it's a sensor for your, basically, it'll, it'll tell you what your tire pressure is, and you, it'll tell you also uh, the temperature of the, the hub area of the wheel. Um, you can see all those little, if you look at the picture, all those little yellow things represent tires. So you could you can run a do a tractor trailer with this you can expand it uh, whatever you want to do uh, keep in mind with your setup here the sensor for that thing is inside the or it's, it's on the outside of the wheel inside the tire directly across from the stem so you come you start with the stem you come all the way over to here and that's where the sensor is going to be so when you're programming it you hold it up close to that area so it can recognize it set it up okay if you uh, wanted to add your tow vehicle to it you can buy stem uh, caps that go on the stems that will act as sensors but like a, again this is another good example of, of using the uh, online manufacturers videos okay 
All right. Also, this, <laughs> it keeps going. This is the Wi-Fi Ranger. So the Wi-Fi Ranger is a signal booster, number one. So you can see this top line, Sky 4 LTE, and then four digits. That is your Wi-Fi Ranger. So you would take all your family's uh, tablets and phones, and you would put the password for the Wi-Fi wi Ranger in it. And when you, went, go, when you go to Wi-Fi, you'll see this number here. That's it. Then the center line here is just a cha temporary password, change me now, and then the four digits. Okay. And then the bottom line is, is an address. You punch this into your browser. And when you do that, you'll see everything that your the Wi-Fi Ranger sees. So you would you would go to this this uh, address, then you would pick out the campground Wi-Fi if they have a, if they give you a password like they sometimes do. You type in the password, and then you your Wi-Fi Ranger connects to the public Wi-Fi. It's a really great signal booster. Um, it's a good thing. Period. Uh, but uh, the idea is you put you put the pass the you put the password for the Wi-Fi Ranger into your your phones and tablets so it hooks up automatically then all you have to do when you get where you're going to access public Wi-Fi is use this go to this address and see what the Wi-Fi Ranger can see and connect to uh, also there's a another function you can get a SIM card for it and um, basically it would be a paid service between you and your whoever provi provides your cellular, cellular service generally people who work from the road will get that feature most people don't get it they use the free Wi-Fi version but this is another example of going of looking at their videos at the website and uh, and you can learn more about it there alright so you got a 12 volt TV and it's got a disc player here so you can play discs uh, with your radio you can stream from this USB here put all your albums on one stick and take them with you you can um, stream wirelessly with Bluetooth from your phone or tablet to here you've got an in right here a, U, a HDMI in so if you got a game machine for example that you want to use for on rainy days to keep kids busy whatever you can plug it in here power wise set it right here and go right into the system here so you can you can do that also it's got two zones one and two zone one is speak inside speakers zone two are the outside speakers so again there's a lot you can do with it okay all right I think I've got it here there's one more thing I have to find I must have walked, oh here, let's see, oh there it is right there. So I'm going to just look down at it here. I'm right next to the couch here on the off door side and you can see there's that device there. That's your carbon monoxide and LP gas alarm. So if it detects a build up of carbon monoxide or LP gas, it'll go off. If that happens, you take everybody outside of course. You uh, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front and then figure out what's going on. It should always be green. You can't see it from this angle, but there's a little green LED pilot light on it. So if it's not if it's not green, you want to get it serviced. But um, uh, it's an important device, and it's hardwired to the battery too, so you can't shut it off. So, okay, all right. So I think that covers it. Um, so let me. Oh, one more. <laughs> one more thing. This is your antenna. It does not go up and down. It just rotates. So you tune it in that way. Okay. All right. That does it. So thanks for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Uh, remember what I told you about inspecting the roof seals and all the sealant from the factory. That's very important. That's one of the, the main thing for owning a trailer uh, when it comes to maintenance. And of course you have to winterize it and that sort of thing, which you'll have to 